go. What's going on, Rim Youth? Thank you so much for joining us and tuning in. I know I'm not the amazing Lucas or the talented OJ or the amazing Daniel. So today you're going to have to settle for just Pastor Austin. we got Pastor Bam on the guitar and today we're going to open up with some worship. So join me as we pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we get to worship you, Lord, in the spirit and in truth. So Father, may you have your way, Lord, over this live stream, over this um, a message, Lord, and the worship that is about to start right now. May you have your way, Lord God, and fill our homes, fill our hearts, Father, because we know that you can do it, Lord. So may you bless this time, bless this worship. As we lift it up to you, we magnify your name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, Father God. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough for me. Grace is enough for me. Strong with 
magnify your name, Lord, over anything that we may be facing, anything that is happening in our lives, Lord. We have come here to glorify your name and to magnify your name, Lord. We lift our eyes up to the mountains. Where does our help come from? It doesn't come from the mountains, but it comes from you. So we pray right now that you open up the heavenlies, Father, and you pour out into your people. You pour out into your children, Lord God. Pour out into your youth, Father God. For they are the next generation, Father. So Lord, I pray for every single person that is tuned in right now, Lord. Not to me, but to you, Lord. They are tuned in to you. Father, may you capture their heart. May you give them, Lord God, your desires in their lives. Father, I thank you for this live stream, Lord. I thank you, Lord that there is a way that we're still able to reach the youth in a time such as this. But Father God, I just pray right now for your speaker that is about to deliver a powerful, encouraging word today. Lord, may you bless her. May you give her the words to speak. May you guide and walk with her, Father God. Let every word that leaves her mouth be of you and from you today. She is your conduit. She is your vessel, Lord God, to speak to your youth right now in a time such as this. We thank you, Lord, for the young Esthers of the world, Lord God, who are called to speak to a youth in a world in a time such as this. So, Father, I lift up this worship. I lift up the message that is to be spoken today. And I lift up every single youth that is tuned in right now. May you have your way. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. And all the honor. In Jesus' name, we all say Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, just go ahead and heart, like it, share, get some smiley faces. Amen. Right now, I have the honor and privilege of introducing the speaker for today, Sister Ariana. Wow, what an awesome worship. Thank you, Pastor Austin, and thank you, Pastor Bam, for opening today's live if it's your first time joining us for Transformation Tuesday, welcome. My name is Ariana and I get the opportunity to continue our message series, What If? And also to share today's message. But before I do that, please join me in prayer. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the day, the joyful day that you have made. Father, thank you for using me as your vessel to speak today's word, to speak the message that you have prepared, that you have walked me through in order to speak to your children. Father, let every word be not of me, Father, but may it just be from you. May they catch your heart during this time, during this message. I pray this in your son's mighty and matchless name, Jesus Christ, amen. Let me first start off by saying, I did not plan to be here in front of this camera but I'm supposed to be the one that's hitting that wave button to all of you who join us, but God had different plans for me today, amen? So you guys probably don't know who I am, and that's okay, because I'm gonna give you a little introduction. I'm 20 years old, I'm in my junior year of college, I'm a major, I'm majoring in biology, and I'm pursuing a minor in business administration. I have been taking summer classes since May 15th, and I'll take my finals this weekend, but I also take my third class next week. In addition to that, I also serve as one of your RIM coaches as well as the administrator. So if you see a long text that ends with Ariana, that's me. I also have the privilege to uh, assist our media team here at New Hope Las Vegas. And I also have responsibilities at home because I confidently say and love that I live with my parents. It sounds like a lot, right? But let me be transparent with you. I once suffered from extreme anxiety attacks to the point where my chest would hurt and it would affect my breathing. And so my head would pound so loud against my skull and my heart would do the same. And I would impose like verbal abuse on myself to try and, and cancel out that physical pain that I was feeling. I don't know why I did, but I just did it. And it would hurt all the more. And so I would try to distract myself with things like self care, like dancing in front of the little studio in my home, uh, binging Netflix or just anything I could do in my own power to distract myself. 
So when I was asked to give a message on July 7th, guess whose anxiety went from like a, like a mere 60 straight shot to 100? This chick. This, I was already in the middle of studying for a couple exams and now to put my first message together within six days. How timely and how relevant that today's message is titled, What If I'm Anxious? So I asked God, how am I supposed to speak about anxiety when I'm going through it right now? And here's what God has taught me. Anxiety in the physical sense is made up of worry and stress. See, the worry affects the mind while stress affects your body, and that's why when people feel anxious, their senses are heightened. They're in this state of fight or flight in response to a fear. See, doctors, specialists, and scientists have all suggested ways on how we as a society should tackle our fear and how we tackle our anxiety. And so we can experience and we can take care of our anxiety through the physical, but we cannot neglect our spiritual needs. The physical is the exterior and can be taken care of through temporal means, i.e. sleep, food, Netflix, sporting activities, whatever you do to calm your anxiety. But the spiritual, that's the interior, that's the eternal and can only be treated by the great physician, the Prince of Peace, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, but Ariana, guess what? I can't help but feel anxious. I can't stop thinking about what the future is gonna hold. I can't stop thinking about whether or not doctors will find a cure for this virus. I can't stop thinking about when we'll finally be able to stop wearing masks and breathe like normal people. I can't stop thinking about how the new school year is gonna look or work. And I can't stop thinking, but listen, stop. <laughs> God's word says, do not be anxious. And I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you because I'm gonna trust that you're old enough and that you're faithful enough to have a Bible in front of you. But today's scripture comes out of Philippians 4, verses four through nine. And when you read it, here's some context behind it. Paul writes to the, to the church to rejoice and to have joy in the Lord. See, this joy that we have for the Lord shouldn't be dependent on the circumstances around us, but it's to put our joy in the Lord by having a deep contentment anchored by trust at all times, even in the most difficult and uncertain of times. It's crucial for the church to show reasonableness to everyone as followers of Christ, meaning we're not looking out for ourselves, but we're looking out for others. And he reminds them that the Lord is soon to come. He then goes on to say to not be anxious about anything, reinforcing what Jesus taught in his sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6, 25 through 34. The Lord also knows what we need and he'll provide it, but we need to have an open communication with him through prayer, clearly stating our request and pleading with our whole heart, but in thanksgiving and reverence. Which leads me to point number one, combat anxiety with prayer. Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I'm gonna be honest, I heard Lucas say this point last week in his message and I really, really enjoyed it. So thank you God for speaking through Lucas so I can use this in my message. But when he said this point, I was thinking, when out of all my anxious times, did I combat my anxiety with prayer? And it brought me back to my first day of high school. See, I really try to put on this calm, cool and collected look and attitude about myself. I even wore a black leather jacket to try and, you know, package the whole deal. And it was August and it was about 97 degrees, bad on my part. <laughs> but in reality, when I got there, I was sweating <laughs> and I was experiencing hot flashes in my heart and, or I was experiencing hot flashes and my heart was pounding and the heat from the sun and the body heat from everybody else, it wasn't helping. So the hallways were loud and the, it was overcrowded and the people were too tall and too close for my liking. And when I would walk into an air-conditioned classroom, I'd sweat all the more. Why? Because I was afraid that people would see me sweating. And a lot of people told me this in my senior year, that when they first met me, I had this intimidating look. But the Lord knows how many prayers I prayed that one day to try and calm my anxiety and to stop sweating so much. Okay, but why are you telling us this? Was it to embarrass you? No. It's to show you that we as humans tend to want to be in control of the situation around us. But when we don't have control or when we lose control, we tend to become anxious. So Paul redirects our focus that we shouldn't be anxious about any one thing, but in everything we do from our thoughts to our actions to the clothes that we wear, we attach prayer, which is our communication to God. It's our time to be real with him because he already knows what we're going through. He knows the thoughts that you're thinking of. He knows the feelings that you're going through. And he knows how to handle the situation at hand, but he wants to hear it from us. He needs to know that we too recognize our anxious nature and are openly seeking him. Which leads me to point number two. Once again, let go and let God. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
It's too often that we hear this Christian phrase, but what does it even mean? In this context, it means to let go of your anxiety, to let go of our controlling nature, and to give it to him who will ultimately lead our path straight and give us an incomprehensible and overwhelming peace upon our whole being. The peace of God is one of the many blessings he gives us and makes available to us. See, by giving our anxiety to him, we relinquish our control, meaning we release it, we humble ourselves, and we exchange our own feeble power. I don't care how much weight or how many uh, bicep curls you can do, how much weight you can lift, your power is insignificant to his power and his control that assures us and gives us a peace of mind that he has already handled the problem that, we, that we're facing. See, this peace is greater than anything we can imagine. What we thought was for our own good, his way is greater. For scripture says our, way is not his, our ways are not his ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts. So we can never comprehend this peace because it's something we cannot describe with mere words. But be reassured that a promise is made. That when we make our request known to God, his peace will guard our hearts and our minds that were once filled with anxiety. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Apostle Paul closes with this formula on how we should respond to our anxieties after prayer. We cancel out any negative thoughts or by thinking of positive things that fill our spiritual cup of joy. He then tells the Philippians that whatever they saw Paul practice in verse 9, that they too should apply it to their life daily so they can be filled with the peace of God and ultimately recognize that he is the God of peace. Leading me to our last point. Point number three, practice combating anxiety by reinforcing positives. The longer we dwell on the negative that comes from anxiety, the more we subtract from our own lives. We start to look at things in a negative perspective. Oh, that's gross. That's bad. This is, we shouldn't even do that. Instead of wallowing further and deeper in our sorrow, start speaking a life into your situation. Change your perspective. We have the power to control our thoughts by taking authority over it and taking captive of each and every thought and deciding whether to release it or to keep it. And we should think and reflect upon where God has taken us from each and every fulfilled promise to the blessings he's given us, from the battles he's already delivered us from. And to, so we set these minds on, our th on these things. Philippians 4, 9, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. It's good to hear the word and it's good to observe how your spiritual leaders react to certain situations in life. But we need to be doers of his word. We're giving access and the resources to seek God and to research more, to build our relationship with him. But if we're not applying it, if we're not letting it transform our lives, then we stay where we are. We stay in this rut and we continue going through this negative cycle. But you don't have to accept that kind of life for yourself. Instead, take heart, stop being a victim because God has already called you a victor over the situation you're in. But we can't just expect change to happen in one day and be satisfied. We have to practice our faith and we do so through devotions, through prayer, and through worship. So as a closing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the beginning of my message. I have always battled with severe anxiety attacks, and it would cause pain in my entire body. So in preparation for this message, I spent about 75, maybe about 90% of the time on my knees, <laughs> crying before the Lord and pleading for him to take away this pain because the things I would turn to weren't working. The long workouts, the long hikes, the long self-care routines, the hours spent on Netflix. My anxiety kept coming and nagging at me and it wouldn't stop. But as I cried out and I begged for him to take it away, to take all that I'm feeling and just relieve me of anything and everything, the pain is gone. <laughs> and my tears stopped flowing and I was calm. And so this past Saturday, July 4th, we, we celebrated in freedom as a nation but I myself experienced my own kind of victory. I experienced my own kind of freedom, and that was a victory over the, my anxiety attacks. And here's what God spoke to me during this time. Anxiety is a spirit that comes from the spirit of fear. He said that I did not give you a spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God gave us a spirit of fear, not, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Anxiety does not come from God. Anxiety does not belong to you, and it doesn't identify who you are. Instead, it goes against the identity identity that he purposefully gave you. See, this is not an overnight thing. We don't change in one day, but instead it's a daily thing. This battle of, this battle of anxiety is a daily thing. 
and it's a battle that we encounter, but we can choose the outcome. And let me tell you a secret. We're already crowned as victors, but you have to first choose to be crowned. So take me as a living example. Yes, on July 4th, I experienced my first victory, but now I have to continue to choose victory over anxiety. So in your time of battling with your anxiety, can I first encourage you to number one, combat your anxiety through prayer. Pray to God and make a note to him that you no longer wanna feel this way. Then I ask that you, number two, let go and let God. Allow his peace to overtake you and fill you to wash out any anxieties and worries. And finally, number three, do what Apostle Paul writes and reinforce your positives. We can't control everything, but there's one thing that you can control today. And you can control whether or not you decide to choose Jesus and choose his peace and his plans over your life. Plans not to hurt you, but to prosper you. So if you've never accepted Christ into your life or feel like you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, can you just repeat this prayer after me? Dear Jesus, thank you. I admit that I cannot handle this life on my own power anymore. I admit that I am in need of something greater in my life and that something is you. I believe that you have come down here on this earth thousands of years ago for little old me. And today I choose to confess and commit myself to following you. Today I make you my Lord and my savior over my life. I pray this in Jesus name, amen. And for those that are battling the anxiety in life, I'd like to pray for you too. Father, you know every thought in our minds. You know every anxious feeling that we're feeling. Father, if it's a fear of whether or not we're gonna get sick from this virus, whether or not it's gonna impact our family, whether or not it's having school in the fall and what it's gonna look like. And Father, you ultimately give us, the, give us peace for you are the Prince of Peace. So Jesus, I ask that you come into our hearts, you come into our minds right now in the name of Jesus and you fill their hearts with your peace. You fill their hearts not of, not of negative things, Father, but you remind them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you did not design them to be in this anxious state, Father, but you designed them to be victorious over the anxieties here in life. Jesus, I ask that you continue to watch over them. I ask that you continue to protect the families of each and every one of them. I ask that you continue to I ask that you continue to just fill them with your peace. And Father God, it's your peace that surpasses all understandings. We can't describe it with our own words. We can't describe it with our own actions. But ultimately, we know that it's you because it's something that can, it's something great. It's something glorious. It's something marvelous that can only come from you. So Jesus, as we finish this live today, I ask that you're with each and every person today. I ask that you comfort them in their anxiety. I ask that you comfort them during this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And I'd like to call up James, our RIM director, who will close us out. <laughs> amen and amen. Can we get a bunch of likes and a bunch of hearts for Ariana? She did such a great job. Man, everybody goes through anxiety. I go through, anx I go through anxiety. Everybody goes through it. But the real question is, how are you gonna to respond to it? Are you gonna just take it into yourself? Or are you gonna give the burdens back to God? Amen. Always give it back to God because he is the ultimate healer. He is the ultimate restorer. He is our everything. All right, one more time, we give it one more heart, two more hearts, three more hearts back to Ariana. I got a couple announcements. So pretty soon, say pretty soon. All right, I heard you. Pretty soon we are gonna have a four square next gen 2020 digital experience and James you're probably asking how much is it Three ninety nine. dollars no cost to you no cost to your parents there's gonna be so many exciting new speakers um, and it's gonna be digital it's gonna be online you're gonna be uh, you know talking to other kids talking to the speaker it's gonna be all fun so uh, I believe it's on our bio so just the link is on our bio register through there it's relentless youth ministry on Instagram and also with that being said with our TGIFs on Friday, I wanna give you guys a little challenge. I want you guys to DM, DM us or email us, text us, and give us a call, whatever it may be. We need some ideas, some ideas, some good ideas to make you laugh. We can make a fool of ourselves, us coaches, we're fine. Just as long as you laugh and you have a good time. Because why? Ministry is fun. 
Amen. So with that being said, Relentless Youth Ministry, we love you. Tune in next Tuesday at 5 p.m. for our Transformation Tuesday. Love you guys.